Hello, and welcome to worship at King of Glory Lutheran Church in Boise, Idaho. I'm Pastor Paul Olson, and we are glad to be with you today. Today in this service, we will have an opportunity to share Holy Communion together. Holy Communion online is obviously a little different experience from what we're used to, along when, uh, when we gather in person as a community of faith. But we still believe that Christ can and is present with us in this sacrament. And we come to the table of the Lord today with all the reverence and wonder in which we normally receive this awesome gift. If you're able to gather a bit of bread and wine at this time in your home, take a moment to do so now. If you don't have wine available or bread available, that's okay too. It's perfectly acceptable to use just one or the other. And if you have neither, that's okay too. Just come together with us in prayer. God is always with us and there will be another time like this one soon when we can celebrate the sacrament together. Let's begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thy 
people feed. Air of life, the fountain flows. Here is balm for all our woes. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us Gracious Lord, Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God and heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. Lord be with you, and also with you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith, hope, and love through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all of the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With joy. 
May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Your paths overflow with plenty, O God. Your paths overflow with plenty. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Gospel for this Sunday in the time after Pentecost is from Matthew, the 13th chapter. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought forth grain, some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears Listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root. But, he dur but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word and understands. This is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for the one for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields 
in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Jesus was such a failure. I mean, read the Gospels if you don't believe me. He preaches and he teaches and he heals and he astounds. People love him at first. Crowds gather. And the more they listen to him, the more they realize Jesus isn't quite what they expected. And in the end, miracles are not, most of them seem to figure he's just not worth the cost. In the Gospel of Matthew, nobody seems to listen to him. He can't get anything through the thick heads of his disciples. His preaching falls on deaf ears. His miracles are fun for a while, but then nobody's much impressed. Even John the Baptist doesn't even seem to get it. The most devout people found him, find him sacrilegious, and they call him names and dismiss him as just another person crazy with demons. His own mother and brothers have a hard time getting through to him. It didn't work. It It just ain't working. It's ministry on the rocks. Nothing's going right. Jesus, Jesus becomes rejected by the crowds. They're turning on him. Someone out there somehow is plotting against him for his life. It's life or death for him now. He's a failure. So what's a savior to do? Well, it seems like he just throws back his head and laughs. He starts telling jokes and riddles and parables. He teases, he plays with us, and he makes incredible promises about the generous faithfulness of God. Of all the stories and sayings of Jesus, this is the first one that Matthew calls a parable. He's probably thinking of the old Hebrew tradition of the mashals. A mashal was a sort of riddle or a story with a hidden meaning, a story with a mystery to reveal, but a story that hides its secret wisdom in some surprising way, some twist, just begging you to dig deeper and discover it, teasing you with a treasure worth hunting for. Remember last week's gospel story where Jesus turns away from the stubborn crowds, and he says to God, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent, and you have revealed them to infants, to babies, to children, who always love stories. Children love stories, especially ridiculous ones with talking animals and things that could never happen except in heaven or the wildest imagination. Who even love it when you tease them, or at least play with them? It takes a child, a childlike heart, to do that. We grown-ups are just too anxious. We worry about too many things. We're too deadly serious, and we never get the joke. We miss so much. Jesus is teasing you. He's a failure, and his life is on the line, but he plays with you. He's teasing your brain, asking you to think in some strange, new, unimaginable, heavenly way. He's like that, you know? If Jesus speaks to you and it doesn't leave you going, huh? Or knock you flat off your your feet, you probably just didn't hear him right. Listen, Jesus says, listen. If the Bible puts you to sleep, doesn't leave you, leave you wanting to argue with it, then you're just hearing what you want to hear, and you'd best go clean your ears. But if it catches your breath and it still leaves you wanting more, then you're probably ready to come out and play with Jesus. A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds ate it up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they didn't have much soil. They sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked them. 
Some seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some 100, some 60, some 30. Let anyone with ears listen. This is a story about a guy who's a failure at farming. He's just wasting seed. He's not even looking at what he's doing. He's feeding the birds and sowing to the sun. He might as well be farming in a parking lot. Nobody farms like this. Nobody. Nobody but God. God is a wild sower, indiscriminate in love, profligate in mercy. So what kind of soil do you think you are? Well, it doesn't matter one whit to God. He will risk his most precious word on you. He'll send his son and let you treat him like a failure. Put him to death. Crucify his love. God will waste Jesus on you. Lavish grace upon you. Just for the hope of some small harvest in your soul. There's good soil, of course, where things sprout up like a perfect summer day. But most of us can't claim to be the richest soil. I certainly can't. Call me picked over, rocky and stubborn, lacking depth, rootless rootless and shiftless, easily scorched and too quickly scorching in return. My faith so easily troubled, so easily distracted by the cares of the world and wealth so alluring, yielding nothing often as not. And yet... God sees fit to waste extravagant love on just these such. In hopes, in hopes, in hopes, taking a chance on us and in spite of it all, reaping an unbelievable harvest. Such a God. So what about us? What about us at King of Glory Lutheran Church? We're more than just receptors for God's world, more than just soil and seed beds. We're sowers too. What about King of Glory Lutheran Church? Should we claim to be successful or a failure like Jesus? Should we claim to be good soil or admit to being rocky soil? Or maybe it doesn't matter one whit to God. Because call us hard soil or good soil, this is where God is sowing his seed. And not just on us, but through us, making us into crazy farmers with seed to share. Sometimes it seems like we spend a lot more time around here wildly throwing seed than than we do bringing in sheaves with bushel baskets. The word of God wasted on us. But what about that Old Testament reading for today? Isaiah claiming that God's word is never wasted. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out of God from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I send it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. Now, some would say that trying to follow Jesus just isn't worth the payoff. Living graciously is too costly. Forgiving others is too uncertain, and often is not, often not. It just doesn't work. Nobody notices, let alone appreciates your effort. If you really, really give this Christian life a try, if you actually work up the nerve to share your faith with someone, to love someone as Christ loves us, to stand up for justice, to reach out and try caring for a change, well, it can be pretty much like trying to garden in a parking lot. Lots of sweat, toil, and tears. And in the end, what do you have to show for it? A lot of love wasted, I suppose. But then you've got Jesus saying... You just never know. And love is never wasted. And grace is always child's play. And if you just sow with careless abandon, you'll reap an unbelievable harvest. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. 
It's that invitation of Jesus again. Come with me. Come with me and I'll teach you to live with a sower's carefree abandon. Come with me and experience forgiveness, the freedom to fail in some colossal way, to make excellent mistakes for the love of God. Just do something, even if it's wrong. You have the freedom of God's forgiveness to play with. God will forgive you quickly. And even if it takes the rest of us a little longer, the truth is God will eventually work that out too. Because grace is always lavish, if it is grace at all. So you can save your seed if you don't sow it. But without that risk, unsown seed is worthless. Love held back is no love at all. Grace only bears fruit when you scatter it wildly. Waste it without the slightest concern for who is worthy or what good it will do. Waste your love. Give freely. Lose yourself. Forgive madly. Speak up for Jesus. Just risk it. You might be wasting your time. You might end up failing grandly. But it doesn't matter. You are called to sow and scatter the grace of God and trust the rest to Jesus. That's God's gift to you. The carefree abandon of yourself. The giving away of yourself in hope and confidence and trusting God. And the fact is, there's a pretty good chance that most of what you do in Jesus' name won't amount to much of anything at least not the way you or I would imagine it. But the promise is still a harvest beyond imagining, a life beyond measure. And in Christ, nothing is wasted. Everything is saved. So there he is, Jesus out in his field, that failure. There's Jesus out there sowing and laughing with abandon, not worrying about the harvest, throwing seed everywhere, whether it will amount to anything or not, just doing the gracious will of God and leaving the rest up to God. There's Jesus out there sowing and laughing and acting like there's no limit to God's love, no limit to God's mercy, like forgiveness could heal anything, like there's more than enough grace for everybody like giving it away would only bring you more. There's Jesus out there asking, won't you come out and play? Amen. Open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart Lord, let my heart
heart, Lord, let my heart be good so. I invite you to join me as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees and for lands stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustain, sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Renewing God, Revive your church in every place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen our relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. At this time in our worship service, it is the offering time and if you would like to make a contribution to support the work of king of glory lutheran church in our congregation and in the community you may do so by going to the website where you'll find lots of options for direct deposit with venco uh, making a credit card payment uh, giving by text or giving by regular mail but at this moment i would invite you to consider your own life and what you are grateful for and how you would respond graciously to the grace of God given to you. Now please join us in a prayer of gratitude. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. By your word you bring us the promise of your abundant grace. Nourish us through grace and promise, that we might proclaim your steadfast love to our communities and in the world, through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Take my life that I may 
And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus will shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill our hearts and all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We know and believe that Christ is truly present here. In with another these simple gifts, the mystery of bread and wine become his body and blood for us. Rest assured that Christ welcomes you at his table. To know his presence and to receive forgiveness and life. Gathered and scattered in our homes though we may be, at this meal today, we come together as one church, united with the church of every time and place. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. If you have been able to gather bread and wine, or if you have but bread or wine, Please share it now with those gathered around you, or share it yourself with me. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ given for you.
Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor rulers, nor angels, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God the Creator, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace, Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.